God. God is good. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, God, for allowing me to live for 42 years. It's my birthday today, and I turned 42. Today's vlog title, The Fit for the Soul. You can see the bread behind me. First, the Word of God is food for the soul. My wife gave me a new birth, uh, birthday gift. It's a new Bible. This is beautiful. And I eat of this every day. You got spiritual butter. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat it up, amen. <laughs> Are you ready for the word of God? Okay, so I'll explain this a little bit later. But, all right, so let's go ahead and get to the scripture first. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 29. Okay, that's the word of God behind me. I always like to put that there. You know why? If I, if I teach without the word of God, if I teach without the word of God, you don't know if it's true or not. We must have his word of God so you know it's from him. It matches. And I use the King James Version, the KJV. It says, And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee. I've, uh, I've went to the Sea of Galilee in about 2019 with a group. We went over to Israel, and I've got to see the Sea of Galilee. It is beautiful. We arrived there, and we all started praying, and I could feel the Spirit of God there. Jesus did. He walked on the water of the Sea of Galilee. I know it happened. Praise God. Amen. And it says, And went up into a mountain and sat down there. great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, those who can't speak, maimed, maybe they're, you know, injured or have many different things wrong with them, and many others. cast them down at Jesus feet they brought the blind people the dumb people the main people the lame people and they brought them to Jesus feet and he healed them that is a miracle amen and so much that the multitude wondered <coughs> When they saw the dumb speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see. 
and they glorified the God of Israel. And here we say it says, Jesus feeds the 4,000. And that's why our told today is the word is a food for the soul. In Matthew 15, 32, it says, Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude. because they continue with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. Jesus has already done his miracles. He's healed them, but he's, or he still has compassion for them. So he's telling his disciples, I can't let them leave without being fed. They haven't ate for three days. They've been with me for three days. And his disciples say unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness? So yeah, Israel is a dry place as well. And so again, they're saying, where do we find much bread in the wilderness? You expect us to feed this many people? How, Lord? And Jesus saith unto them, how many loaves, meaning breads, have ye? And they said, seven and a few little fish. So usually a loaf means like a, a whole um, uh, bread without being sliced. Again, I'll, I'll get to this here in a minute. And verse 35 says, And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks. That's why we always thank God before we eat. And break them and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And again, for this for this word, filled means as in you've eaten a lot and you're done eating. Okay? And they took up the broken meat that was left. Seven baskets full. How big were the baskets? We really don't know, but it says they were full. And they did eat for 4,000 men. Beside women and children. So they counted the men. Maybe they didn't have time to count all the women and children running around. But they counted the men. And they counted 4,000. That's what it says right here. So this here it means they counted the men. And they don't have an exact number of women and, and children. So, for example, they have 4,000 men. You 
know, and, and some are married, maybe some not. So maybe we have 4,000 men and 3,000 women equals 7,000. And then back then they had many children. I mean, you could say or guess around another 4,000 children. We really don't know the number. That's just kind of a guess that you would, you would make. But we know there's around 4,000 men. And he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coast of Magdala. It just says he has seven loaves. It doesn't say how big or how small, but he, he blessed it and broke it and fed the multitude. Now, the word of God feeds your soul. The word of God is spirit. And yes, as physical beings, we eat bread for our physical flesh. We have to eat every day. But what do we do for spiritual things? And yes, here they, he physically fed them for their flesh that they needed. But he also showed them spiritual miracles. So this is the next chapter of Matthew, Matthew 16. It says the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came. They came together and tempting, meaning testing. They desired him that he, meaning Jesus, would show them A sign from heaven. The Pharisees and Sadducees desired Jesus, Jesus, we want to see a sign from heaven. He, meaning Jesus, answered and said unto them, When it is evening, You say, it will be fair, meaning good weather, for the sky is red. You know, when the sun starts to set, it starts to turn into a beautiful reds and orange colors, the sunset. You can see that, that's a sign. You say, it will be fair weather, meaning nice weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul, meaning bad weather, today. For the sky is red and lowering. And that was a sign to them that there was bad weather. He says, oh, ye hypocrites. Ye can discern the face of the sky. Back then, there was no news on, online or newspaper or on your phone or to watch the news on the TV. There was no weatherman to tell you what it would be. Or, hey, next week it's gonna rain. They didn't have that. They looked to the sky and they discerned. They, they could tell when rain was going to be coming. And that was a sign. So why did Jesus say, oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the sign of the times. She, people should know and be able to see and notice what's happening in our world that the, the end time is getting closer. 
a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And in today's time, 2023, I'm sure you're the same. You're the same. A lot of people in our dark world want to say, prove it. Let me see it. Why do I have to show you no sign? You can see it clearly. You know that this time is awful and we're waiting on something better. And you know that the end time is coming, but you still decide to do wicked and evil. And it says, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but a, the prophet Jonas. <coughs> Let's say, if God gave us a time, maybe June 8th in 2023, that'll be the end of the world. If, if, if God was to do that. What would the world do? They would go ahead and sin, do whatever they wanted to do, and they know, oh, I know it's going to be June 8th, and right before the June 8th happens, they would get ready and repent. So it's kind of the same as he's saying here, oh, ye hypocrites. So we have to be careful. So we have to be careful and be ready. But anyway, here's the point. He said, but the sign of the prophet Jonas... It's been a few weeks ago, or a few vlogs ago. That we spoke about Jonah, which was also Jonas. And that he was called to go to Nineveh, which was an evil, wicked, vile city. We know the story that Jonah tried to escape that, that demand, and he was swallowed by a big fish. And when he was free from that fish, he went ahead and preached to that city that God had given you a warning. Continuing on Mark 4, or Matthew 4, and he left them and departed. Jesus had already finished giving them sign. He'd done a miracle. He healed them. He fed the thousands. With seven loaves and a few fishes, he counted the 4,000 men plus women and children. And now they're asking for a sign. Jesus has already preached. Jesus was greater than Jonah at that time when Jonah was preaching. And they knew about Jonah. And now Jesus is saying, <clears throat> in Matthew 16 5 it says when the disciples were come to the other side they had forgotten to take bread then Jesus said unto them Is take heed, meaning pay attention, listen, beware. Also meaning warning or caution. Said so take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now. I'll explain this picture. So we have leaven and unleavened. Unleavened is without yeast. Okay. 
Yeast mixed with water and bread will make the bread rise. Without yeast, it doesn't fluff up. It stays more flat. So for an example, when you add that yeast and it fluffs up, it's like adding sin to your life. A little bit of leaven. Is the same as a little bit of sin. So the unleavened is with nothing added, no sin added, same as the Word of God. It's perfect. So again, Jesus is saying to the disciples here, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They add false doctrine. And they, meaning the disciples, reasoned among themselves, saying, it is, it is because we have taken no bread. Remember, they forgot to bring the, the bread with them. And Jesus makes this comment of, Take heed and beware. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye a little faith, why reason or be concerned ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. Do you not yet understand, neither remember, the five loaves of the five thousand? And how many baskets he took up? Neither the seven loaves, which we just read about in the last chapter, of the four thousand, and how many baskets he took up? So Jesus is talking to the disciples, saying, Oh, you little faith, do you not understand? Yeah. You already forgot? Yeah. Did you not understand or did you just forget? <laughs> he says, do, do you not understand? Neither, meaning the word or. Remember the five loaves? And verse 11 says, How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it? Not to ye concerning bread. Those are fleshly things. Oh. Jesus just done this miracle of feeding these thousands of people. And he's saying that ye should beware the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they that they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine. Meaning the teaching of the Pharisees of the Sadducees. So my point, Jesus knew that the disciples forgot the bread. Jesus has already showed them the miracles. The disciples saw Jesus, he was given the multitude, we're feeding them until they were full. And they had 12 basketfuls. Wow. 
from five small loaves. And those thousands of people ate until they were full. You know, people calling out, oh, I would like some more, I would like some more, and they just kept feeding them until they were all full. And maybe they're going to want more fish until they were satisfied. I'm sure there's a lot of men that were hungry. So they fed everyone to their full and then still took up baskets. How is that possible? Jesus is a miracle worker. They saw that physically happen with the physical things they needed. The same thing that happens in the spirit here. So now, so Jesus is saying, do you not understand or do you not remember that I just showed you miracles? I'm not talking about physical bread. I'm talking about the leaven of doctrine. Jesus, I am the bread of life. This is the bread. This is unleavened. God doesn't need you to add anything to it. And when people add things to it or change it, then it becomes leavened. So Jesus is warning them. Take heed of their doctrine, of their additions. You must follow these laws and add and add and add and add new laws after new laws. They're hypocrites. God gives grace and love and mercy. Love is love. Go ahead and do it. That's not the point. Back in the day, they had their laws that they had to follow, and it wasn't successful. Jesus himself is the fulfillment of the law. He provides the mercy and the grace. It's very simple. I could explain even deeper, but we want to keep this simple today. Thank God for his grace and his word of God. Today is 2023. So back in the day, they had scrolls and scripts that they had to write. They didn't have the printing presses and things like we have today. They took parts of the word and they wrote their laws by hand. But now it's different and that's all I have today. Praise God, love you and bless you.